go ahead, have a good session. Thanks. So welcome everyone for this last session of Asia Group 2021. Uh, so this is a session on uh, lattice script analysis. If you are looking for real world. Oh, Alice, your sound dropped out, at least for me. Anybody else? Yeah, no, sorry. For oh, some reason, all? yeah. I don't know. Okay, let me let me keep an eye on it. Okay, so um, okay, uh, sorry. Back to questions. If you have any question, uh, feel free to ask them uh, either on the chat here or, or just unmute yourself to ask questions. And. Oh, sorry. Do, is the song going like this? Uh, yeah, it's sort of, sort of surging in and out of existence. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you can fix it by um, selecting audio settings and then disabling things like um, automatically adjust micro microphone volume or things like that. Okay, I will try this while Vesel is speaking. So for the moment, I'm just keep clicking on it. Um, <laughs> so I hope it works. So our first speaker is going to be Vesel. Uh, Vesel is going to tell us about the joint work with Leo Duca on um, on entry overstretch regime of entry and when does the the overstretch starts. So Vesel, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Alice. Um, so Entru is a uh, lattice-based uh, public key crypto system uh, of which many variants exist. One of which simply known as uh, Entru, which is a uh, NIST uh, post quantum crypto finalist. And until recently, lattice reduction attacks were thought to behave similar on these Entru instances as on Ring LWE or just LWE. Uh, however, uh, it was shown by Kirchner and Fuchs that uh, in, the, in the regime for a large moduli of Q, uh, let's reduction behaves better than, than you would expect. And we call this the overstretched regime. And the main question of our work is when do we go from this understretched, so the normal regime, to this overstretched regime? So our main contribution is that we pr explain precisely how BKZ breaks overstretched and through. And we predict precisely when BKC breaks over stretch and through. So what's the through problem? Well, first we have a secret key that consists of uh, small elements F and G in some ring R. And we have a public key H that's given by G times F inverse model Q for some models Q. And throughout this presentation, you can think of the ring R as uh, ZX over X to the N minus one. And these elements F and G are small in the sense that their coefficients uh, are uniform over minus one, zero, and one. So then the, the entry problem asks to, to given this public key H to recover uh, the secret key F dot G or just any, uh, what we call rotation of it. So it's kind of equivalent. Um, so to solve this problem using lattice reduction, we first need to uh, define a lattice. And the entry lattice is just given by all pairs A dot B so that uh, H times A equals B mod Q. And note that the, the secret key, the F, F G also satisfies this. Uh, and this lets us two uh, very important properties. Namely, the first one is that it contains these rotations of the secret key. And for most parameters, these are unusually short factors in this lattice. And secondly, uh, these rotations also generate an unusually dense sub lattice of high rank in this lattice. And just recovering this dense sublet is, is uh, already enough most of the time to actually break the crypto system. Uh, and after that, it's very e much easier to recover these, uh, uh, these short facts, like the, the secret key. Okay, so our question is how does BKC um, uh, recover these uh, rotations of the secret key or, or dense sublet factors? Well, we see that for in, in the understretch regime for small values of Q, uh, BKZ first finds immediately the, the uh, rotation of the secret key. And this is similar to how you would, uh, like it behaves similar as unique SAP, 
for which we have very concrete uh, predictions. And indeed, we can see that uh, the estimate given by these unique SAP uh, uh, methods closely follow uh, the experiments. However, at some point, when we increase the, the model's Q, we don't first find these uh, secret keys, but we find then sublattice factors. And we do find these at much uh, lower block sizes, so much earlier than uh, expected or predicted by these, uh, these unique SP estimates. And this crossover point is what we call the, the fatigue point. And note that in this instance, for like n equal to 127, it already lies quite low at around 700. And given that the NIST parameters uh, are about linear in n, so Q is about uh, four times n or five times n, uh, this is already, already quite uh, close to that. So um, it's not really clear where these parameters lie, if they lie in the understretched or the overstretched regime. So what do we know from this overstretched regime? Well, we know that at least when Q is at least uh, n to the power 2.783, um, then we are in this regime, and this was shown by uh, Fusion and Fook. Uh, however, what they only show is a, a kind of a distinguisher, so they uh, allow you to detect if this lattice contains a dense sublattice or not, uh, but they don't really explain, it doesn't really explain how this dense sublattice is then uh, recovered. And secondly, it's, it's not concrete. You could make it concrete, but then still it's far, far from uh, practical observations. So we want to nail down this fatigue point. So our main result is that BKZ finds a dense subplot factor uh, at position n minus beta over two. So that's kind of the middle block when beta is at least uh, this quantity. And this is uh, the same as for the Kirchner and Fuch. However, if you look at the closer at the, at the constants, then we do imp improve on their result. And this means that the fatigue point uh, lies at as totally at n to the power 2.484. But more importantly, because we now understand what happens, uh, we can also do an average case analysis and give uh, concrete predictions that closely uh, match the experiments. And because we now understand both the regimes, we can also give a concrete uh, estimate for the fatigue point. And we nail it down to about 0 0.004 times n to the power 2.484. And this also explains why this fatigue point in our experiments was so low because of this uh, low constant. But because the, of this high exponent, the NIST parameters are still uh, lie in, the, in this understretched uh, regime. So the key takeaways, we now have concrete predictions uh, for all values of the model SQ. And the fatigue point lies much lower than expected, but still well above these uh, NIST parameters. The code is available at this editor for the experiments and the, and the predictor, and the full paper is available in print. So thank you for uh, listening. Thank you, Bessel. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? So you can unmute yourself, you can write in the chat, you can write on Zulip everything you like. I can maybe start with a short question while people write or think of their question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I had a question. You say Kirchner Fook, it gives only a distinguishing attack. In mm -hmm. your case, you say you can recover a short vector in the dense sublattice. So I guess from this, you can also recover the short, the dense sublattice. And in yep. the record, record it talk, you also say that usually you can also recover a short vector, not just the dense sublattice. Can you say more on this? Um, yeah, so first you recover this, this dense sublattice vector. But what we see is that after this, uh, so if, if you have one dense sublattice factor, you can also recover the full uh, dense sublattice by just looking at the rotations and, and okay. intersecting this with your lattice. Um, and then what you essentially get is a um, uh, just a, a much lower dimensional problem. So you just have a rank n uh, lattice, and inside of this lattice you still have a quite a unusually short uh, factor. So it again becomes a unique SVP but uh, a much easier one. Um, so what you mostly see in practice is that uh, BKZ makes sure that as a result of BKZ, the first n factors in your basis just become this, this dense sublattice and it almost immediately recovers this secret key. So um, after just a few more rounds of, of after finding this dense sublattice uh, factor, you also recover the full secret key. Okay, thanks. 
There's a question from Miri. Yeah, so I was wondering if you had um, an estimator for the, the cost of this attack in some sense. And um, like similarly, so you say that the, the, um, the cost of the attack is, um, is much, so you, you're, you're still uh, far, um, so the, the NIST parameters are still far, far below your fatigue point. But so if, if, I, um, if I'm not mistaken, like for in, in dimension 512, for example, the fatigue point is like something like 20,000, whereas the, or maybe 40,000, whereas the, the proposed parameters are like 20,000. So, so the, the, mm -hmm. the gap is really, is, is, is not that large. And so like many, many people have suggested taking like for, for, not for chems, but for signatures to take Q to be two to the 20, for example. And so this, this would be, way into your range of parameters. So I was wondering if you can estimate the cost of the of the resulting attack for, for such parameters. Uh, yeah, so we get we have like an estimator that <clears throat> given the, the, the parameters, you can get a very precise uh, block size that's needed. Um, and then you can use the, the standard, uh, well, estimates for how, how costly BKZ is to run with this block size. Thank you. I think there is one question on Zulip. Uh, maybe we have time for this last question before moving on. Um, so let me read it. Do tower field structures affect the cross point of the best attack or lead to better attacks? Um, so I think this was uh, discussed in the Kirchner Foot paper. So you, so before that paper, you had like this these subfield attacks and and. Um, and, and basically the Kirchner Fook paper showed that, okay, we don't actually need those, uh, just because he itself already uh, acts better. Um, and I think they also say that this, um, the trade-off you get from these, these towers is, is worse than what you just get from the, the BKC attack, but I'm not an expert on those uh, kind of attacks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot. So um, let's move on to uh, the next paper. So Vesa, if you could stop screen sharing. Great thing. Cheng, you're up. So the next, the next paper is on faster dual lattice attacks for solving LWE with applications to crystals. And Jiang Gu, we give the talk, and this is joint work with Thomas Johansson. You have the floor. I can't hear you. Oh, thanks for the introduction and thank you for coming to my talk. So, uh, so I will start with this NIST PQC project. And now we know that we are in the third round, we have seven finalists selected and the majority are lattice based. So. Uh, we know that for these lattice-based for these lattice-based schemes, the concrete security can be related to solving an LWE instance. The main, most relevant attacks are lattice-based uh, lattice reduction attacks, uh, m m including primal and dual attacks. So, um, when we select secure parameters, usually we use uh, BKC that iterative calling SVP Oracle with uh, smaller size. So. Uh, asymptotically, the best uh, SVP oracle are implemented by sieving, and we use this notation. So beta is, is uh, SVP dimension and D is the lattice dimension. So to estimate the cost for BKC, we have this famous call SVP model. The main idea is to keep in the main complex term and uh, just uh, discard the sub-exponential term. So this model is very good, but uh, still this is an approximation because uh, discarded uh, uh, sub-exponential term can be big. Duke has also showed the significant called dimension for free means that SVP in dimension beta can be solved using a sieve in a smaller dimension. And the uh, last issue, Kupt Albrecht showed that all first started the classic and the quantum complexity of sieving in the RAM model. 
uh, RAM means uh, random access machine. So based on this research also with progressive sieving, uh, the designers uh, started this uh, core beyond core SVP harness means classical gate complexity metric in the RAM model. So they only studied primal lattice attacks. So the designers dismissed the do attack because they think that first, most of these vectors uh, get from the sieving larger by a factor. Secondly, the trick of exploiting all the vectors is not compatible with the dimension for free trick. So uh, the research question here is, should we dismiss do lattice attack when we uh, selecting parameters? The answer is no. Actually, we can exploit both gains here. Both gains means this. Uh, uh, default gain and also once you've produced many short vectors and also we can still outperform prime attacks rows the short vectors are larger by larger so what we do is we propose a faster dual lattice attack with two main contributions one is a new ablation by style fft distinguished with fft alphabetic size reduced from q to gamma because gamma is much smaller than q so we can have a larger fft dimension Secondly, we propose a new two-step lattice reduction strategy that can exploit the both gains. Uh, these are two models for this D4F gain. We have this asymptotic model based on this uh, asymptotic analysis, and we also have this extrapolation model first appeared in this GSIC paper. This is extrapolated from uh, experimental data, but this is a local model, and uh, uh, Theo Dukas uh, suggested not to use this model. So. Uh, for uh, we apply our algorithm to crystals and also certain FHG parameters and improve the state of the art. And uh, uh, actually, this uh, do attack has very wide applications in lattice-based crypto. The take-home messages uh, do not dismiss do lattice attacks. Here we show some uh, complex numbers. So this is uh, complex numbers for Kyber. Uh, 768. This is aimed for NIST 3. So the claimed prime uh, com complexity for primal attacks is 250. So use this extrapolation model, we get uh, 205. But uh, as uh, discussed before, we will not claim that we use this model to break uh, Ky this uh, Kyber 768. Now we uh, focus on this asymptotic D4F model. Uh, with this progressive BKC with one, two, and this uh, GSC to estimate the quality of outputs, the shortest vectors, we get a complexity of 207. Uh, this is uh, so. Uh, Dukas also said that uh, this GSA model could be uh, too optimistic. And uh, actually, according to a simulator he sent us, uh, we need a larger uh, beta to achieve this quality. So the complexity is 211. Uh, uh, we are still starting this uh, simulator, so this is this number is just for your information. We also use a folklore model, like we use eight BKZ tools, so we need eight D times eight uh, D SVP cores to uh, achieve this GSA quality, and uh, the complexity is two o eight. So this is for Kyber. Actually, we get sharper results for this entry parameter because they only claim the uh, they claim the two or nine bits of security, so the security margin is only two bits. So, uh, for the uh, all the models discussed above, uh, the, we can um, do below the um, security level like two or seven bits. So. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and also we would like to thank Dukas for his helpful comments and uh, helpful discussions. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. So uh, please, um, all know kind of you know you know how it goes. Uh, ask away. Um, can uh, I can I kick off questions with um, uh, a question? Uh -huh. So you have you combine several techniques here in order to improve the performance of the dual attack. Uh, can you give us a sense of like how much each of those building blocks contributes? Like one of the tricks is to kind of uh, you know get many samples out of sieving and then the FFT and then so what is the the major contribution to improving the performance of the attack? Uh, I, I think definitely this. Uh, uh... Uh, this uh, one sieving produce many uh, many short vectors is a dominant part. If without that, then 
uh, we will had uh, extremely large complexity compared with uh, uh, with uh, primal attacks. Uh, and also another is like this uh, guessing also, also guessing, I mean, for this uh, very sparse secret guessing is very helpful. And also FFT is, uh, can reduce, also can reduce several bits. Cool, a question in the um, Zulip chat is, is your full paper available? Uh, I think it goes, it, it addresses that it's not on ePrint. Um, so I guess that's the question, but Yossi, feel free to clarify. The, the current version, the conference version is published and uh, yeah, we are still uh, working on some extensions. So <laughs> we are still working, but I think it will appear soon. Uh, Thomas in the chat asks, is there a reason why it doesn't impact other NIST lattice finalists? Is there something specific about crystals here? Uh, this also applies to, to Anchu. It's just the crystal uh, has, uh, has relatively low secure margin. Um, um, no, not like that, but, uh, but uh, it's, uh, I mean, compared to others, it's, uh, I mean, some schemes have uh, have even larger security margin. So, <laughs> but 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 now it seems that the, like this entry uh, H HPS uh, that parameters uh, offers the lowest uh, security margin. So, okay, great. As far as I can tell, this is for now. Oh, uh, there's another question. Could you elaborate on the two-step process you mentioned? Uh, is this in the conference version of the paper? Asked Yossi. Uh, yes. Uh, so the first uh, step is just this uh, this PKC, then you can produce a good uh, basis and also use this default FKing. And uh, the second step is like this uh, uh, you. We, we have a sieving on a um, sub lattice and uh, then this uh, this sieving will produce many short factors and also this sieving uh, because in the first pkc we will cause a sieving for many times so, so in this uh, second step we can use a larger sieving than the sieving than the sieve used uh, in the first step so it means that we can have a few more dimensions in the second sieve that's uh, that's a, a general framework Okay, great. So um, thanks again uh, for the presentation and the paper. Um, I think uh, we're now ready to move on to the next one. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I try to. Can you stop sharing and, and then Joanna can you start? Yes. Perfect. So we are ready to go for the third talk of this session. Um, so this talk is going to be given by Joanna Loyer. It's a joint work with André Cheyou on uh, lattice sieving with quantum random walks. So Joanna, whenever you are ready, it's yeah, um, it's yeah. Hi, uh, so I'm going to talk about lattice sieving via quantum random walk. Um, so a little bit of context uh, before we begin. Uh, so with the emergence of quantum computers that will soon be able to factorize and solve uh, the discrete web, uh, we need new crypto systems, which are quantum resistance. And um, uh, the NIST launched a few years ago in international contest in order to standard of them. And among the final candidates, several crypto systems are constructed from the latest based programs. And in this presentation, we'll focus on SVP because if we can solve SVP, then the reduction makes that we can solve the other problem as uh, efficiently. So in a nutshell, tomorrow world cyber security will certainly depend on their hardness uh, to solve SVP. Uh, that's why it is important to know in how much time and with uh, which amount of the space resources the opponents can break a crypto system based on this problem. Um, so the shortest vector problem is uh, given a basis, uh, for example, here B1 and B2. Uh, we consider the set of all integral linear combinations, uh, which is called a lattice. And uh, 
this program asks us to find the shortest vector of the LED. So there are several methods to solve LDP. Uh, all of them are running in external short time. And uh, one of these methods is uh, by ceiling. So we we'll start with a list of vectors of a certain norm. And at the end of uh, the sixth step, uh, we get a list of uh, shorter vectors. So to do that, uh, we check the pairs of the list, list vectors. And uh, if they are close in angle, uh, their difference has a shorter norm. So we, we repeat at the sixth step again and again until we are. Um, so we, we apply these steps uh, to get shorter and shorter vectors. And after a few steps, uh, we can get a very short vector, uh, which we hope it is the shortest vector of the LED. Um, we can improve this algorithm uh, using locality sensitive filtering. So this uh, allows to efficiently compute the nearest filters around the vector using um, a neural decoding code structure. So we can insert vectors in their nearest filters, and then check if the filters if there is a closed vector instead of checking the whole list, which is a uh, way large. Um, our algorithm works in two steps. Uh, first, we separate the sphere of vectors in large areas using filters, and then uh, in each area, we run quantum random works to find all the pairs of closed vectors, and the work uses a second layer of filtering to reduce the time complexity. Um, so this algorithm runs uh, in exponential time, like all the, all the other cells. And uh, here, at the time of uh, um, the time of quantum space exponent, uh, we get uh, from the trade-off. Uh, by choosing the parameters in our algorithm, we can recover the complexities of uh, the best classic algorithm um, and the previous best quantum algorithm. And uh, now we have better optimal time complexity for the, for the sieve uh, to solve SVP. So concretely, that implies that uh, a good system based on SVP, which was claimed to have 128 bits of security, uh, now it has lost uh, four of them. So thank you very much for having listened to my talk. And if you have questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, so that me ask the first question while people write theirs, unless someone unmute themselves. No. Uh, yeah, so I have a naive question from non-quantum experts. So uh, you, as I understand, you improve the algorithm by replacing Grover by the quantum random work. And yeah. so Grover, I can understand that it gains a lot over classical if you manage to have a, a big circle like you need to search in a, in a big space that's where you will gain the most and in the case of the quantum random work and you also have some nice criteria for a classical algorithm that will be improved a lot by the quantum random work um, so, so can you repeat the last uh, the last part of your question yeah i was wondering whether there is a, an easy way to express like conditions on the classical algorithm so that quantum random work is going to increase the runtime uh, a lot like for Grover, it's you need to have as much search as possible, kind of. That's what it's going to be accelerated by quantum. And maybe can we change a bit the algorithm to have even more speed up in the quantum world? Um, maybe it's not an interesting question. Uh, sorry, I, I, I don't understand that. Um. Okay, no problem. <laughs> it's really naive question, maybe it No, no, it's my happen. English level. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, you, um, if I rephrase, uh, you ask if uh, we can get um, an improvement uh, using random words in, for classic algorithm. Um, no? Yeah, so would there be a, a nice way to express the algorithm so that the quantum random work really improves a lot? Like, could it be that maybe the classical algorithm is not the good one, but maybe we change it a bit and then the quantum speed up um, would be larger? In fact, uh, in fact uh, it, um, the two steps of the algorithm, uh, mm -hmm. separating uh, here and then doing the quantum random works, uh, for the, 
Uh, it is just the first step that allows to, to get a, a very uh, um, lower time expense. Um. Yeah, okay. Do we have any other question? Uh, you can unmute yourself. So I see no question in the chat. Um. I have a naive question. Uh, how does it interact with these lower bounds that um, um, Tyson Elena recently established? Uh, I didn't hear. Um, can you repeat? Oh, there were, there were some recent lower bounds for sieving I was wondering if uh, how your work interacts uh, with those lower bounds. If there is a lower bound for sieving, yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, in the uh, square root of uh, 4 plus 3 power over d with d is the dimension of the lattice. Well, we can't uh, get uh, lower to the, to the bond in, in the city. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Otherwise, maybe we move to the next talks. No one? Okay, so let's go. Xi Cheng, are you here? Ah, uh, yes. Cool. Then. Uh... Let the screen sharing comments. Okay, I I don't see uh, you. Uh, sorry, maybe there's something wrong with my slides. Uh, if you can't share your screen, maybe one of your co-authors can. Uh, sorry, there's something wrong with my computer, I guess. Uh, sorry, Arborist. Sorry, Martin. Uh, sorry. Uh, sec, can, you, can you give me more sec? More sec. Could you email your slides somewhere, say to me, and then I share. Okay, 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 okay. My screen. Uh, let me. Maybe there's something wrong with my. Can you tell me your email? Well, just put it on the Zulu chat. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But it's a long one. Or can I just talk without the slides? As you wish. Whatever you prefer. Uh, maybe I can send it to you. Um, sure. Can you tell me your... I will type it in the chat here.
Yeah, did you receive the snipes? Not yet. Okay, I think I got them. You sent me a tech file. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you see it right now? Receive like uh, I haven't received yet. Okay, I now have a PDF. I think, uh, okay, so. Um, no, wouldn't it be hilarious if now I can't show my screen? All right, you should now be able to see my screen. Hello? I, I don't, but maybe I'm the only one. No, I oh. don't either. It just says, <laughs> has started screen sharing. Okay, a bunch of computer scientists try to uh, use computers. It's, this, is um, a theme. this is a theme for uh, this. Uh, thank you. Now we thank you. All right, so uh, yeah, uh, thank tell you. me when Martin. to advance. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. Uh, uh, you know, the Chinese people are not so familiar with Zoom, although the boss of the co company is a Chinese. Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a pity. Uh, thanks. Uh, sorry, everyone, I, I will be as quick as, as, as I can. So my, my topic is about a, system, a systematic approach and analysis of key mismatch attacks on NETIS-based NIST candidate camps. This is joint work with my master student, Qing Yue Zhang Xiaohan, and um, Professor Pan Yanbing, and uh, Professor Hu Lei, and uh, Professor Jin Tai Ding. Yeah, please go to next slide. Yeah, we all know NIST and the Department of Homeland Security of the US will, has give, given us a migration roadmap to PQC. I think the, they will give our standard in the in the year of 2024, and uh, uh, they say there will be a transition of the team to needs the post quantum cryptography in the year of 2030. So uh, they, I think they they think that the quantum computers will come in the year of 2030. Uh, yeah. So let's go to the next slide and. Um, we can see now in the on the third round of PQC stand, standardization, we have we still have five encryption or camps, and uh, uh, among them we have uh, five five of them are based on NETIS, and uh, there are three finalists. We all know they are Kyber, Cyber, and uh, Enchu, and we we also have two alternates and they are Frodo and Frodocam and Enchu and Enchu Prime. Uh, so what we want to do is to, uh, next slide please. First, we want to uh, give a cryptographic assessment to evaluate the key views resonance of these candidates in misuse situations. And um, we all know in many authentication 
key exchange protocols, we we want to use the uh, we want to uh, we we want know in 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 our version in the in in this kind of uh, protocols we use the uh, FO transform. Can we directly uh, construct CTA secure versions from the CPU CPA CPU CPA secure runs without the FO transform? Uh, in this case, key, key views is essential. And um, I think the side channel assisted CCA attacks uh, can, su can successfully attack against the CCA secure ones. Uh, I think our, our work can also help in, in, in improve the efficiency of these CCA attacks. Next slide, please. And can, uh, I, can I inject really quick that you won't be able to get through 24 slides, right? In the time you have left. Yes, yes. We will know the uh, CPU secure uh, cams, CPU secure cams. And um, next. What we want to say is that uh, the key mismatch attack, uh, the adversary uh, send the deliberate chosen public keys and uh, they get information from the Oracle, whether they took the case from Anis and the, and the SV are match or not. If, if match, it returns one, else it returns zero. Next, please. And uh, next, we want to show you the, our basic idea. From the Oracle, we, we can give, a, we can have a sequence of uh, returns. They are all, there are, there are a sequence of signals consists of zero and one. So we can, we can transform this problem into a coding problem. We, if we want to give a lower bound for the, for the average number of queries, we can transform it to, into give a lower bound for the binary recovery tree. And uh, we know if we want to give a lower bound for the tree, we, we can use Huffman coding. Huffman coding is a, we know Huffman coding is optimal. So we can easily get the following result in the next slide. That is the, the lower bound can, can be given. We can see the, we can see this result is directly from the result of the Huffman coding. The mi minimum uh, expected number of queries is larger than the sound entropy and, and uh, uh, less than the plus one. This is our main result. And in the next slide, we can give an example about the lower bound for Kyber 20, 1024. Yeah, it's about 2176 queries. We use Huffman coding directly. And uh, in the following slides, we can have a uh, we can give our lower bounds for all the case mis for what case mi case mismatch attacks on all the native based list camps. Yes, this is our one of our main result. And uh, in the following result, we we also uh, try to give some results about the practical attacks. That is how we choose the security parameters to improve our uh, practical attacks in the following slides. You will, you will have to wrap up. Yes, uh, we... okay, okay. Okay, we, what we want to say is that in the, in the last, last uh, some, yeah, in the last one, maybe, like we can directly go to the, some, yeah, go, go. next, next, please. Next, next, uh, okay. We, 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 we can improve the, uh, uh, in the chess, in the chess 2020, very, uh, they gave us some work about the side channel attacks um, uh, on that is based on camps. And, and uh, our result can be used directly to Im improve the result. Uh, please go to the next uh, slide. And uh, we, we have done some, done and uh, some, some, and implement some of the, uh, our results against the Kyber and the New Hope. And uh, we can see we can reduce the uh, 
number of queries by, uh, by nearly half, nearly by 50%. Yeah, this is uh, nearly all our results. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks all for listening. Thank you. Right, I'm stopping screen sharing so I can see questions. Um, are there uh, any questions already from the audience? If not, then let me ask the first question. So, um, how far are your attacks from your lower bounds? Like, how much further can your attacks go? Uh, you, you mean how far you mean we, we get the CPU secure ones or CCA secure ones or something like this? Uh, yeah, so like the like so you 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 have bounds and you have attacks and then so what's the gap between the two? Uh, uh, for some of them, it's very close. The gap is close. Uh, but for some, like New Hope, it's um, a huge gap between the theory and uh, practice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any other questions? So I, I do have a naive one, if nobody. Um, so the lower bound you give, it's as far as I understood, it's for the specific attack you are considering with trees and things like that. So do you have any ideas how to circumvent this lower bound? And I don't know what, what would not fit in the model where you have a lower bound. Uh, so uh, you, you mean how to improve the practical attacks or? Yeah. Can we, what kind of attack could go below this lower bound? Uh, below the lower bound, you mean? Yeah, is there a way to, I mean, the lower bound is only for a specific class of attack, right? So could you, do you have any ideas of things that would not fit into this class of attacks? Uh, so uh, we assume that we, the, the, the lower bound is given, assuming that we, we, we cover one block by one block. We, we cover the coefficients block by block. But if you can recover the coefficients uh, two blocks or three blocks or yeah, then you can you can maybe you can get some you can get less queries. But uh, you you need to build a, a very large tree, so it's it also becomes very difficult to build such tree. I, yes, I hope I. Okay, I yeah, that answers my question. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, I think uh, we have thus reached the end um, of this session. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, in particular, thanks to the speakers uh, and the authors. Um, and I think the next item on the agenda are the closing remarks in some other Zoom room. <laughs>